But then Mike Tyson was there, and he was sitting in the back where reporters was, were, and they asked him if he wanted to move to the front, and he said, I try to stay as far away from dirt as possible. He was then asked about Mayweather being better than Muhammad Ali. His words, Mayweather's words, he writes, the guy is going around saying he is better than Ali. I don't want to hear that expletive. Uh, when asked about Floyd, he said this, I was always told by the mother that if you can't say anything nice about someone, don't say nothing. All right, Stephen A., uh, Mike Tyson clearly is not a fan of one Floyd Mayweather, but let's talk about these comments specifically, inbounds or out of bounds? Well, they're not out of bounds because it's Mike Tyson. They're not out of bounds because he's the former heavyweight champion of the world and he's earned the right to feel any way he wants about a, f a fellow pugilist. Um, it's not my place to say that about him. Uh, and not only that, uh, in defense of Mike Tyson in this regard, there are plenty of people, people who have befriended Floyd over the years that found themselves having a problem with Floyd later on. Uh, 50 Cent was one of them. He'll yeah. be on the show tomorrow, even though I don't know what the situation is. Up. I think they've made up. Yeah. But at one time, it wasn't that way. So I, from what I'm told, Mike Tyson and, and Floyd Mayweather have had their outs. But I don't know. All I can tell you is this. Mike Tyson, did it seem disrespectful? Sure. Calling Floyd dirt? Obviously disrespectful, because Floyd can turn around and easily say something like that about Mike Tyson. Okay? But the flip side to it is that you find a lot of boxers that would be absolutely appalled for anybody saying that they were better than Muhammad Ali. Because a lot of fighters, even in this day and age, believe they are where they are today because of the sacrifices Muhammad Ali was willing to make. Mm -hmm. That could be where this is emanating from. I don't know. I haven't spoken to Tyson about it, uh, but I didn't find it as out of bounds as everybody might perceive it mm -hmm. to be. I'm with you about the Ali remark. When I, I believe Floyd said it to you yes, in the All Access. Yes, he did. I, I said it wasn't just disrespectful to Muhammad Ali. It was blasphemous because this man is on the highest pedestal to me in the history of sports. He was the greatest in, in every way, shape, and form to me. And so when, when, you, when you go to that level of disrespect, it goes into blasphemy, and I get where Tyson would be offended by that. The rest of it, I don't know what their personal beef is, because obviously when Mike Tyson was heavyweight champ, he wasn't exactly a role model himself. Exactly. So I don't know right. where the dirt came from. The, other, yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. other part to it, though, is this. Floyd specifically said on the All Access, he didn't mean any disrespect. He just believe he refuses to be brainwashed and to believe in Sugar Ray Robinson or anybody is better than him. So that's how he feels. He doesn't believe he's being disrespectful because he's not saying Ali wasn't great. Yeah. He's just saying I'm the greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be here tomorrow. Again, our guest will be 50 Cent, uh, as, well as, as well as Jimmy Fox. Please join us. First take is on the road in Vegas. We want to thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have some veterans in the audience. Thank you guys so much for coming. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, right here on ESPN2. Have a great day, everyone. You're watching ESPN First Take, presented by Bass Pro Shops. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to First Take. It is time for Carrie's Court. Uh, it's the opportunity where people can ask Skip and Stephen A. the questions they've been dying to ask them. If you're sitting at home, you're on your couch, you're debating with Skip or Stephen A., this is your opportunity to be a part of it if you come to our live show. Our first guest here is Keith Lewis from Chicago. No surprise. You have a question for Stephen A. I do. As a Bulls fan, I have to ask, with the new Kevin Love injury, do you still see them coming out of the East? Like, is that really realistic? See who? Point. Cleveland? Cleveland. Yes, it is realistic, particularly against your Bulls, who seem to be inconsistent and are having trouble with the Milwaukee Bucks. Even with the Jared Smith suspension? Uh, you only get one question. Yeah. Uh, all right? But I'll give you two. I'll give you two. JR's only gone for two games, not the entire series. So he'll be back before this series is up. Bulls can make it tough. There's no question about that. But they need to show me some consistency. I don't like what I've seen from the Bulls, and to be quite honest with you, I expected them to be better. You know, to me, Kevin Love is being a little overrated of late because all of a sudden it's like death and destruction because there's no Kevin Love. You realize, and we talked about it a lot, since the All-Star break, I think Kevin Love didn't play in eight fourth quarters, and, and you were having an issue with, why doesn't he play? I, I can't put him on any pedestal yeah. if he doesn't even play in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the Cavs have no chance without him? Really? Well, I, well, well, well it's, it's not that. It's that come playoff time, the game slows down. 
and big boys play in the low post. And what happens is Kevin Love pulls them away from the basket because of his ability to shoot three-point shots. So if you have him out there, he's a significant threat. They have to come out and guard him. And as a result, it creates space in the low post for the Kyrie Irvins and yeah. others to operate. So not having to worry about him, that puts even more pressure on J.R. Smith to step forward and to hit perimeter shots along with LeBron himself. And that's what's going to make it interesting because they're going to have to hit. They have to do something. Okay, when the Cavs play the Bulls, if in fact it is the Bulls, who will be the best two players on the court? LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. Am I right about that? You know what? Yes. Most games. But Every I'd give, game. I'd give a couple of those games. I'd put Jimmy Butler at number two. Mm. Well, I don't All know. Right. You know why? Well, because Jimmy Butler plays on both ends. Jimmy Butler may not drop 50 like Kyrie, yeah. but he could drop 25 to 30 and help neutralize somebody on the defensive end of the floor. I I'll take Kyrie. We're staying with the of Chicago course. thing. We have a lovely lady. You're beautiful. Thank you for joining Carrie's Court. She's from Chicago. Tell everyone your name, and you have a question for Stephen A. Um, Nicole Brady, I wanted to know how much did Rondo, Rondo hurt his chances in the free agency? Rondo cost himself minimally $30 million. Wow. Mm -hmm. Perhaps more. And I hope it's a lesson to a lot of folks out there. He's known as being a bit temperamental. At one time, he was an elite point guard. He also happens to be somebody who is a champion, who showed up in big moments in big games. Understand the disastrous effect his behavior had this year. He came across as quitting on his team. And when you quit on your team, that's, uh, I mean, that, that is just, that's nuclear. You can't have that. But then on top of it all, he reminded everybody he can't shoot. Not just from the perimeter, but from the free throw line. So you can't shoot from free throws. You can't shoot from the perimeter. Plus, you pre you came across as being a bad teammate. They lost and wouldn't even give you a share of their playoff money. How are you now in a position to go into free agency and demand X number of dollars? You're lucky if they give you an opportunity to ask. I thought Rondo flat out quit on the Dallas Mavericks in game two of this past yes, series. Did. And because of that, I had absolutely no issue. In fact, I applauded that the Mavericks decided he deserves no playoff share of the money. Good. Yeah. All right. Stephen A., you've said the Lakers shouldn't want him. Maybe we can get him at a discount. But let's move on here. Derek Huge from discount. Virginia, you have a question. And are you a Cowboy? I'm not for sure. You're a Cowboys no. fan. Okay, I, I think so. Uh, your question for Skip Bayless. Skip, is Stephen A. going to lose more bets against the Cowboys this ha, season? Ha. Cowboy Nation never forgets. Yes, they never, never. forget. I love your T-shirt and your picture. Never. You know what? Oh, okay, Stephen if this is a love fest, go sit with him. He, he will lose no more bets <laughs> because he learned his lesson the hard way last year. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's wear it's a Tony it's Romo jersey. Uh, see, I want everybody in America to know I don't hate the Cowboys because of the Cowboys. I hate the Cowboys because of the fans. Because it's people like him. He is sitting, he is standing next to Kerry Champion with a smile on his face, holding up a poster. That's your definition of a Super Bowl right there that I lost a bet. <laughs> That's what you regressed to. You haven't won a championship in 17 years. You won two playoff games in that pit. Two playoff games in 17 years. But y'all walk around this country like y'all accomplished yeah, something. Yeah, should have won. Are pathetic. Should have won. The Cowboys are fans. Should have won. It a was a one. catch because that was a catch. That's you right. know it and I know it. They Thank still would have lost. Aaron Rodgers would have still oh, had the ball geez. with enough time, yeah. only needing a field goal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Kerry's court. Uh, you can put your picture away. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, we want to ask our fans at home to do us a favor. Again, if you're here in Las Vegas or if you're watching at home, please go to the Twitter. Use the hashtag FT in Vegas. This is your opportunity to be on the show. We'll play some of those, uh, show some of those photos throughout the week. Coming up next, the disrespect continues. Mike Tyson essentially says that Floyd Mayweather is quote-unquote dirt. Why is that? The discussion after the break. First take on the